So climate, there's two really basic concepts about climate when we were talking about both the multiple uh, choice and even in the vignette. Um, the two basic aspects of this are macro and micro climates. So uh, the macro climate is talking about regional issues. So when you hear any time anybody says macro uh, in this context, they're talking regional. Um, so that means how much snow annually does this place get? How much rain do you get uh, uh, on a you know average day in a specific month? Uh, so it's specific information that is useful to know, but it is regional and therefore not about the exact site. So there's going to be certain things that are going to be very important to know. For example, um, if it's uh, if there's uh, very little sun, uh, you know maybe it's uh, uh, cloudy most days. Well, that would be something you would understand as a macro concept. Uh, and the macro concept would be very important if you're trying to figure out uh, is, is it possible to put uh, solar panels there? Is it possible to uh, uh, have an outdoor cafe and it, you know, does it make sense? That kind of thing. Uh, but the macro idea uh, is specific uh, in this sort of generalized sense. It's not specific to the exact site. So when we start talking about specific to the exact site, we're talking about the microclimate. So one example of that would be, let's say we've got a, a bunch of buildings. Uh, so you've got all these uh, buildings over here. They're all lined up on a street. Uh, and these are relatively tall buildings. Let's say they're all, I don't know, 100, 150 feet tall. Uh, I could be in a very sunny place. I could be in, Phoenix or Tucson or someplace like that that gets a lot of sun, but if this is my site, from a microclimate standpoint, these buildings are all going to cast shadows on my site. So it doesn't really matter that from a macro standpoint, macroclimate standpoint, I get a lot of sun uh, because I'm not going to get sun at the site. So this is kind of like what we just talked about before in terms of the, on the vignette, the issue is that it's always going to be from the south and it's always going to be at that 45 degree angle. Uh, but on the multiple choice, this kind of topic would come in something like this. It would, it would be some scenario and you should understand the fact that buildings will cast shadows at different times in different directions. Uh, so uh, morning shadows would obviously be going towards the west. Um, evening shadows would obviously be going towards the east. Uh, midday shadows would be going towards the north. But uh, in any of those scenarios, in a situation like this, uh, that zone right there is going to be in shade at pretty much all times of the day. So two different ways of thinking about it uh, definitely have impact on both multiple choice and also onto vignette type of uh, discussions. So similarly, we can have the same kind of discussion about wind. When we're talking about macro ideas of wind, uh, the idea of a wind rose is uh, just something that you have a, a cardinal points and somebody has gone through the effort of saying, well, okay, uh, today the wind was coming from here uh, compared to our site there. And uh, maybe the next day the wind was coming from there, and another day was coming from there, and another one was coming from there, and another one was coming from there. Oh, and then here one day it was over there, so the wind was coming from a different direction. And then uh, we had the another, middle of the season later, we had maybe a bunch of wind coming from over here, right? And you can start to sort of line up, well, there's a lot of wind coming from these locations, uh, and just the occasional little bit of wind coming in these other directions. So this is a way of sort of uh, kind of scientifically, just by uh, keeping track and keeping track over years, understanding where the prevailing winds are coming from. Well, that's a huge deal, especially on big open plains, especially in uh, kind of suburban and rural settings. Uh, but when you get into urban settings, like this little sketch that we were just talking about, having the prevailing winds is actually only sort of useful. What you really start to think about is the microclimate aspect of what are the wind tunnels that get created. So if I have prevailing wind that's moving, say, this way, 
Well, the effect on my actual site is likely to be that it's gonna be channeled down through the valley that's made by these buildings, and I'm gonna get eddies of wind as they uh, swirl through those open sites. Uh, so again, sort of separation between the concept of the big, big, big idea of the macro uh, versus what's really happening directly on the site. Uh, another sort of term there that's sort of worth mentioning is the idea of degree days. Um, that's just sort of a way of, of calculating how many hours of sun a particular site gets, uh, how many, uh, what, the, the, what the warmth uh, you're, you're going to be getting from the sun uh, through that as a process. So all of these things are calculable, but then at the site, it's about uh, kind of actual investigation and research into that particular site. Uh, like for example, you just you couldn't do a wind tunnel uh, understanding of a site without uh, like building a model or or at least testing it out as in some other way. Whereas um, from a macro standpoint, you just look it up in a book and it'll tell you what uh, what speeds you're likely to uh, come across. So uh, the same terms will get talked about differently in those two different settings. Mm -hmm.